All right, the next thing we're going to want to do, we, we've got the printers built, it's assembled, we've calibrated the build table, we've calibrated the projector. You'd think we're ready to print, but before we do, we're going to want to print a few sample calibration prints. And that's because each projector is slightly different from another. Uh, some of them, they have a Basically, you can imagine a projector being like a flashlight where there's a, a bright light coming out. We call that the hot spot. And then it fades out a little towards the, towards the edges. And each projector is a little bit different. So to get the best quality prints, what we do is we, we print a series of test sample calibration prints and we analyze those and we feed that analysis back into the, into the printer settings and that allows us to fine tune that projector for the best possible prints. So to do this, we're gonna actually print something. It's a very short print, it's not very tall, it doesn't take very long. Um, when we decide uh, uh, to print, we, we've already decided, for example, that we want 30 microns XY. Uh, let's say that I'm a jeweler and I wanna print the highest possible resolution. Um, I'm going to probably decide to use a cherry as my material and I'm going to slice it thinly like 30 microns. So in this example, we're going to, we've, we've calibrated the projector to 30 microns XY and we're going to slice our, uh, or we're going to tune our projector at 30 microns Z slice thickness. So knowing that, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll click the print button and We'll look in My Documents, B9 Creator, Calibrations, version 1.2, and wow, we see a whole bunch of things we could print. Well, uh, luckily for us, right at the top, we see Calibration version 1.2, 30XY, and 30Z. So that's, that's the test object that we are going to print um, with Cherry to tune our projector. So I'm going to go ahead and double-click that to open it. And now you see, for the first time, the full print setup dialog ready to print. Uh, right off the bat, we, we're, we're happy because we see something that says, looks good, no issues detected. But um, that's because we've already pre-selected in our material drop-down, we've pre-selected the cherry, uh, which is the resin we're going to use. And it says right there that we can slice from 25 microns to 51 microns. And, and the job we selected was 30 uh, Z. So it looks good, no issues detected. Uh, there's some various information here about the print job and the printer and all that good stuff. Um, and notice that it says default print settings are in use. If, for example, we had came in to the advanced settings and maybe changed the, the exposure time or perhaps we'd changed some of the cycle settings like we'd sped up the VAT. If we'd done anything non-standard, if we go back to the print review, Suddenly, we get this big orange button that says the, the, that the default print settings are overridden. Click the restore. And if you click on that, it changes all those things that you'd messed with back to, uh, back to the factory defaults. And that's, what we wanna, that's how we want to print it first. The idea is we are going to print this object. We're going to look at it. And then we're going to decide if we need to change where that bright spot is located in it as far as left to right or up and down in the center whether it needs to be more or less powerful, and then how the edges are compared to the middle. We'll talk about that after we've printed one. So you may have to print this, this, particular, object, this particular object two or three times, but um, it's a fairly fast print. In Cherry, it does take 31 minutes. Uh, cherry is one of the longest materials to cure, um, and we are slicing it very thin, so even though it's a short object, there's a lot of slices. If you were to be calibrating it, for example, for the new black resin, this print may only take five minutes. And you can certainly tune your machine using the black resin and then print with the cherry, but for the best results, we recommend you tune it with the material you're planning on using. All right, so we've, uh, we've opened up the B9J job file uh, for the 30 microns XY, 30 micron Z job calibration, and it says it looks good. We've got the right material selected. We can go ahead and push that big begin button. So that what that does is it pops up a checklist to make sure we don't forget anything. Uh, let's read it. Step one, inspect the printer, check the power, video, and USB connection. So sure enough, those are all good and connected. Uh, the projector lens should be clean, focused, 
and the cap removed. I've forgotten to remove the cap before. So, yep, that's good too. So we can check that off. Now, step two, click to reset the printer to the home position. So I'll go ahead and click that. The gold arm will move and the slide will move and everything's at home. Step three, ensure the VAT and the build table are in place, but the sweeper is still removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the VAT in place. Uh, once again, I've got the window on the right side. I'll drop that in until it locks or it falls into the slots and put in the thumb screws. Tighten them down snugly, but not too tight. See, I'm using the toggle switch to move it over to that side. That makes it easier to get the next thumb screw in. And then I'm checking my checklist. We take the uh, build table that we had already calibrated and we'll put that into position. So that's good. The sweeper, however, we're, we're leaving out because it, the instructions say to leave it out. So I'll check that off. Now step four, click to lower the build table to the reference fill level. So I'll go ahead and click that. And you see the build table's going down. And what it'll do is it'll stop at a certain point. And when we fill up our uh, tank with resin, we will want to make sure that we put enough resin in there that it reaches at least the bottom of the build table. You can get a little bit fuller than that, but you certainly don't want to go much fuller than that because uh, there's the potential for spillage when the vat moves left and right. All right, step five, add the resin material up to the bottom of the build table, do not overfill, and install the sweeper and close the hatch. You're ready to begin. So for this example, we're not gonna actually put the resin in or anything at this point, but you can imagine pouring the resin in until it reaches the bottom of the build table, and then dropping the sweeper in place. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So we have our sweeper, the flap goes towards the uh, left side, we drop it into place, and we use the little handle to put the little loop over top the spring and do it on both sides. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out because I don't wanna slide back and forth dry. I'd always want to have um, um, resin in there to act as a lubricant. If the, uh, if the little rubber wiper falls off, you can just stick it back on there. Once it's in place and being held down by the spring tension, it won't fall off during the print process. All right, so uh, we've done that. We can click that off. And uh, I would hit create here, but of course we would never wanna actually print dry because the table would interact with the PDMS. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull that table out before I hit the create button, just to show you what it would do if the table was in place. So you hit create and it, it turns on the projector. You can see that the projector is turning on and warming up. Now you see that the projector is warming up and the dialog has changed to what we call the print status. And it just shows you some of the information that um, uh, pertains to the print job. But more interestingly, down here it shows you the estimated time remaining, which is still 31 minutes, and then the time that it should complete, which in this case is uh, 2.33 in the afternoon. Now we, down here at the status, we see it just changed from turning on to warming up. Once that's warmed up, the, the uh, print process will start. And uh, I'm gonna point out a few things with that as well. It says now that's warmed up, it's deploying the projection screen. If you were to look underneath, you'd see the red grid is, is uh, starting. And then uh, now it's beginning to print. So what, it, what happened there, you saw some little movement with the VAT. That's new with the new version 1.8 of the software. The, uh, the, t the vat opens up the window, the table lowers down, and then to help squeeze out the excess resin, the vat does a little shuffle, and then it'll sit there for about 20 to 30 seconds waiting for that to uh, come out. Now we see we're projecting the first layer. That, that Once that is exposed, the light will turn off. The uh, vat will move to the right to release that print. The arm will move up just a little bit give it some clearance, and we'll move back in and lower back down for the next layer. And that cycle will continue to repeat um, until the print is finished. The first few slices, uh, you'll see it waiting an extra long time, and this just helps uh, that excess resin to squeeze out, and it allows the build 
or the, the, the print to adhere better to the build table initially. Once it gets past those first few layers, then the process speeds up. <clears throat> Another thing you will notice if you're familiar with the B9 Creator with the new software is when the vat slides to the right to release the, the part for the next layer, once it gets above a certain level, it will no longer slide all the way to the right. It'll just slide as far as it needs to for the, uh, for the object currently being printed to clear that, to clear that lip and uh, release it. So that, that helps speed up the, the uh, print time as well, not having to slide all the way back and forth each time. So this will be finished printing here in just under 30 minutes or so, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and take a look at a sample of what we would have printed. One last thing I'll point out while it's printing is there is the uh, pause and abort buttons. If we click the pause button, what will happen is uh, it'll continue printing the current cycle, whether it's exposed yet or not. It'll finish that, and once it completes that current print cycle, it'll slide all the way over here and stop. And then you notice down here it, uh, in the software, the status says it's paused. Uh, the pause button now says resume. So while it's paused, you can actually use the toggles to uh, raise the arm up. You can look underneath and see if you think the print is going well. You don't have to worry about putting the arm down. You can leave it up um, and basically inspect the print. Now, that's good to do maybe at the beginning uh, before you've started actually getting into the, the bulk of the model. You're still printing your supports. You might want to look at it and make sure it's working correctly. And if it is, hit resume. If you do that in the middle of a print, it might actually leave a, a, a little bit of an artifact where you paused it. So we don't recommend pausing uh, in the middle of a detailed print because you don't want to leave an artifact. But it is there if you need it. Uh, likewise, you can hit the abort button and it'll ask, are you sure you wish to abort? If you say yes, it'll finish the cycle and put the Z arm back to the level where it was when it stopped and turn off the projector. Uh, the next time you try to print, it'll notice that, hey, you aborted the last print for some reason. Do you want to try to resume it? And as long as you've not moved the arm up and down, you can typically resume a print. If, however, <clears throat> I mean, even if, for example, the power went out or something, you can typically resume a print, which can save you a lot of time and money if you've printed a, a big object halfway through. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and abort this right now. That'll turn off the projector and um, tell me that I successfully aborted the print. And uh, we'll go take a look at the uh, calibration object that we, we just printed. <clears throat> 